Welcome back. Let's look at this exercise on how we would compute uh, depreciation asset book value and gain or loss on asset sale. And by the way, we do have uh, uh, some synonyms that we're going to be using uh, in this. We also have another video that uses some, uh, some different terminology. So uh, the first one I want to address here is asset sale. This is sometimes called asset disposal or asset uh, disposition. So let's look here and see what we have and we'll work through this. This will take us a little bit of time. Sloan Company uses its own executive charter plane that originally cost $850,000 and uh, we're not being asked to uh, come up with all the components of this 850. That's just what the total cost of the asset was. Um, you might note that uh, we use the purchase price plus any other one-time cost necessary to get the asset, in this case a plane, ready. And evidently that totaled $850,000. Uh, it has recorded straight line depreciate, uh, depreciation on the plane for six full years. Okay, so that's important. With an expected uh, salvage value at the end of its uh, estimated 12-year useful life. Uh, $85,000 expected salvage value. Salvage value is also sometimes called uh, residual value. So, it says Sloan disposes of the plane at the end of the sixth year year. All right. So what does this mean? It says at the disposal date, what is the accumulated depreciation and uh, net book value of the plane? Well, that's a good question. So what we have to do, let's get the calculator over here to help us. We have to say, okay, this was the price. This is our full cost. Uh, but we are there's eighty five thousand dollars here that we're not going to touch because we're using straight line depreciation. So what we have to do is we have to take the eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This is the first thing we have to do and subtract the salvage value from it. We do not depreciate past the salvage value amount if we are using straight line depreciation. So that's going to give us seven hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. Okay. So let's go ahead and just write this down. $850,000 minus $85,000 equals $765,000. And that is sometimes called uh, depreciation. base. At least that's what I call it. That's not necessarily terminology that you're going to see. We're going to take that depreciable base, whoops, not 750, 765,000, and we're going to divide by 12 because that's the estimated useful life. So let's do that. So this gives us <clears throat> annual depreciation expense equals $63,750. So they want to know um, what is accumulated depreciation for box one and net book value of the plane box two. Well, accumulated depreciation is very easy, especially since we've got the annual depreciation amount right here on the calculator. All we have to do is just multiply by 6. And that's going to give us $382,500. So I want you to understand what's going on here. Um, well, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, Accumulated depreciation is our adjustment account. We cannot mess with the uh, with the historical cost of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars over on the balance sheet for this plane, but we can use an, a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation 
to get to the what we call the book value. And so how do we get book value? It is historical cost. Write this down if you need to. Uh, so the formula for book value is historical cost minus the accumulated depreciation taken up to that point, which in this case is $382,000. $500. So the answer to number two is what we see on the screen. Okay, so 467.5 plus uh, 382.5. I'm just proofing my answer right now. Gets us back to the original 850. Okay, so these are the two uh, answers uh, that we need. And then it says uh, for part B, they say prepare a journal entry to record the disposal. See up here they called it sale and now they're calling it disposal. So they're trying to work in some vocabulary here, uh, words that mean the same thing. Build your vocabulary. Uh, record the disposal of the plane, assuming that the sales price is, well, number one, cash equal to the book value uh, of the plane. Okay, so in in this case we're not going to have a gain or loss so if we are disposing it for book value that means we got cash equal to book value of 467 500 and cash goes up with a uh, debit okay and we also know that we have to get rid of the actual plane so I'm going to actually jump down to this third box here and I'm going to do that. Now the plane is an asset but we're getting rid of it so we put it on the books originally they didn't make us do this but we put it on the books originally at eight hundred fifty thousand dollars with a debit. Now we're going to take it off with a credit and what do you think goes here? Well, if we're going to get the plane off of the balance sheet, okay, we also have to get the associated accumulated depreciation off of the balance sheet as well. And uh, accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance, and that makes sense because it's used as a contra or adjustment account. So it would have an opposite natural or normal balance as to what the asset does. And assets have an, a normal balance of a debit. And then we get them with a, we get them off of the balance sheet then with a credit. So if accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance to get that portion of the accumulated depreciation, the portion associated with the plane off the balance sheet, we're going to use a debit or the exact opposite of what we were doing all along. And we've already got that figure right here, 382,500, okay? And then uh, they also want us to do some, eh, kind of, this is kind of busy work. Uh, and by the way, do note that uh, there, it looks like they're using the terminology airplane. I used plane. Uh, that's because I didn't look down at the what was going on in the exercise first. Uh, so this will give us an opportunity, I think, to deal with both a loss and a uh, gain. So uh, in number two here, we're going to get $202,000. Let's see, is that right? 202,000, okay. And our accumulated depreciation is still going to be 382,500. And I'll go ahead and fix this now airplane is still going to come off the books at the same 850,000. Let's see here. I think I need one more zero. There it is. All right. So the rule of thumb is if the amount of cash that we receive is greater than the book value, we have a gain. <clears throat> the amount of cash we receive is less than book value, we have a loss. And so we can compare the amount of cash that we receive, 202000 to the book value up here of 467.5. And we are definitely going to have a loss here. 
467.5 minus 202 that we actually received gives us 265.5. Now we could have just plugged this 265.5 as a debit to make this balance, but it, it is important um, that we understand what's going on. We, we need to know the loss has a normal debit balance, much the same way that an expense has a normal debit balance. They actually impact net income the same way. So it's a loss on disposal airplane, okay? 265, 500, all right? There it is, okay? And then we also have a scenario where we're gonna get $700,000 cash. So we can go ahead and we can record that $700,000. We can also do the exact same thing with the accumulated depreciation account. And I'm gonna go ahead and abbreviate a little bit now. Still gonna be the same 382.5. And we still have to get rid of the airplane uh, at historical cost with a credit of $850,000. So let's bring the calculator over here and clear it out. Um, <clears throat> our book value up here in number two is 467.5 and the cash received is 700,000. So we call this a gain. So we're going to take 700,000 minus the book value of 467.5. And that's going to give us 232,500. Uh, and that is going to be a credit. So this is a gain on disposal airplane. Okay, and even if we didn't, um, you know, we could do this a couple of different ways. The correct way to do it was to compare the book value to the cash proceeds, and that's what we did. We can actually proof our answer, and we can say, okay, 700,000, 700,000 uh, plus... Uh, accumulated depreciation of 382500 minus the historical cost of the asset equals 2325. So we know that 2325 has to go on this side. So that's worth mentioning then, right, that gains are, have a normal credit balance much in the same way that revenues do. And gains have an upward impact on net income. They increase it just as revenues uh, increase uh, net income. So that, that makes sense. All right. Well, that's it for this uh, video. Let me get this out of the way here. If you want to kind of take a screenshot there. And I want to bring this down as well. Okay. So that's all the work we did. Wow, what a deal. Okay, that's it for this video.